Oh yes, this is a Remax. This is one of the brands I've been looking forward to during this Monterey Car Week. Uh, yesterday I saw uh, Concept 1, uh, the original one, and today I get to meet this beauty, the Concept 2 in this beautiful blue color. This is their California edition. Earlier today I got to talk to Mate Remax, the uh, founder and CEO of the company, and I'm going to show it to you guys coming up next. Take it If this is your first time here and you want to stay up to date on everything that's going on in the world of electric cars, you came to the right place, go ahead and click on that subscribe button uh, so you don't miss anything moving forward. And let me just remind you that this show, uh, this video, this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. Go ahead and uh, check out uh, the discount code in the description of this video so you guys can save yourselves a few bucks. All right, let's check out this beautiful car. Uh, it is the first time I'm seeing it in person. Um, I hope you like it. And uh, here's what me and my Mate uh, talked about just a few minutes ago. I'm really just blown away by the, by the show. It's, uh, you know, I want just to wear a mask here and not be with the company and just look around. It's crazy. There's still time. There's still time. Yeah. Well, so this is a California edition behind us. Yeah, well, we prepared especially for this event, so uh, with the color and the trim inside. And yeah, I think people in California like, like the combination. I, I think we do. So just for those of uh, my audience that's not 100% familiar with you guys, give us just the basic details about this car and when you guys are going to be putting this in production. So this is our second model. After the Concept 1, this is the C2. Um, it's a high performance car, a hypercar with uh, four motors, 120 kilowatt hours of battery, uh, 1.4 megawatts of power, 1,900 horsepower, so really very high performance, but also quite comfortable and lots of features to make it uh, appealing and uh, autonomous driving technology and so on. So, And globally homologated, so it's a really big project for us. It's a very high investment for us as well. Um, and a lot of new technology. So absolutely everything inside we have developed specifically for this car. So there's no carryover from Concept 1 or from other cars. So everything was specifically developed for it in order to achieve our quite high and quite crazy performance targets. Okay, and so uh, after, uh, you guys are not new to the scene. You, you've already uh, done a lot of different projects and, 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 and parts for other, for other companies. So what made you decide to just go ahead and make your own car? Well, um, that's, also, that's the reason why I started a company. We, in order to survive in the beginning, we started to do things for other car companies. Um, and today we do pretty much for everybody something. Um, but, uh, you know, the heart of the company, the soul of the company is uh, the supercar. And even though it might not be the best business in the world, uh, which car, building cars is not really, uh, it's difficult. Kids don't try to do that at home. <laughs> Staying in school is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but we, um, we, we want to use this really to show what we can do, what electric cars can do. And in the end, all the technologies that we develop here are finding their way into other cars. And so why did you decide to go with all electric? I mean, there are a lot of uh, hyper and supercar companies, you know, McLaren is complaining that, oh, they can't make it happen at least for five more years. What made you go with this technology and believe that this is really the future of, you know, supercars and hypercars? But we don't have baggage. We don't have uh, heritage or, or, you know, luggage of, of uh, past times that we carry around with us. So when I started, I was looking at it from, you know, the first principles perspective. Uh, can you make an electric sports car with electric powertrains? And if so, can you make it better? Because my aim was not just to do an electric car. I want to make it uh, to make a better sports car. So with four motors, one for each wheel, you can do things, for example, that are not possible with a traditional powertrain. So uh, actually what we are trying to achieve is to make the next generation of car. And that's what I believe uh, is only possible with an electric powertrain, not with a combustion engine. Of course, there are advantages and disadvantages. Advantages um, is, for example, the incredible acceleration, uh, torque and everything. Uh, disadvantages still weight. So we need to get the weight down. But we are at the moment where I think it really makes sense. And the ranges in terms of miles is how, how long? So 650 kilometers in terms of uh, NEDC cycle, so the standard cycle, which is not really realistic. So I think that's 400 miles. Uh, in reality, it should be, let's say, 70% of that, 60% of that, depending on how you drive, uh, because these cycles are not really realistic. But it's the only way to measure it apple to apple. 
Now, let me just ask you a general question. You know, the, the car sales, electric car sales are still about 1% to 2% out of the all entire, you know, car sales in, in, in globally. What do you think has to change in order for, for the public to start really buying into this technology and actually buying their cars? Obviously, not everybody can afford this amazing car, but, you know, just, just to believe into the all-electric all power terrain technology. Well, my honest opinion is that, uh, you know, you have the early adopters that will buy... As we're being interrupted by, uh, by a gas-powered car, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, the irony, yeah. but uh, basically, um, you know, there's early adopters that will buy one, three, five percent of the of the cars and make them electric. But uh, I think what will really be an enabler for the electrification is autonomous driving. So when people will not buy the cars themselves, but it will be owned by big fleets like you know Uber, Google, and so on, that will have autonomous cars and and build them custom based on their data and know exactly how much range they need and so on on an average trip and having the charging infrastructure that they own to maintain the cars and so on, that will really be the breakthrough. But then you don't really care anymore when you are a passenger what's inside the car, as well as you don't care what's in the bus or in the train that you are using. Now, before I let you go, tell us a little bit about where do you see you guys in, let's say, three to five years? What are your next projects? Where do you see yourself going? Well, three to five years is not a lot of time in automotive terms. Uh, it takes a lot of time to develop a car and to uh, to bring it on the market. So in 2020, we want to start delivering this car. So it's a lot of work in front of us to homologate it, do all the crash testing, uh, all of the other tests that we need to do. Um, but uh, on the other side of the business, we are really scaling up our components business. So to have our batteries and powertrains and so on in, in a lot of other cars. And that's where we, really see, uh, where we really see our big impact from one side showing what's possible and on the other side helping the industry electrify and go to hybrids and electric cars faster. For the few uh, of my audience members who are actually interested in uh, uh, getting a hold of you guys and maybe putting a deposit down, how, how can they do that? Well, we have a dealership network um, in U.S. We have here on the West Coast, uh, we have uh, uh, Ogara, uh, and we have uh, on the East Coast uh, um, Miller uh, cars. Uh, so uh, we have our dealers in the U.S. and uh, in other uh, parts of the world where the car can be ordered, but people can also shoot us an email and and get in touch yeah all right well i'm really excited i'm, I'm excited what's happening with this brand i'm excited uh, about what's what's coming up next i know this is an expensive hypercar supercar whatever you want to call it and very few of us can afford it but nevertheless this is a showcase of the technology what the electric car technology can do and they can do it better than gas cars i know you know companies like we talked like mclaren are, don't necessarily believe it's possible right now but these guys are uh, going in production in 2020 and again this is not even their first car so i'm really excited about them i'm looking forward to seeing them at uh, uh, many other events uh all right let me know in your comment section what you think uh, other than that see you next time and remember to stay charged